Welcome to backpropagation step by step. And in this video, we shall go over backpropagation math and calculations step by step. We cover all necessary formulations along with computations for you to master the topic. Let's first define a simple feed forward network. First is our input layer denoted with an X, which is also the feature slash data we are passing into the network. Next is our hidden layer with only one neuron shown in orange and the neuron's value is A superscript 2. For ease of reference, we shall refer it as A2 in this video. Next is our output layer, again with only one neuron, shown with A superscript 3. For ease of reference, we should refer it as A3 in this video. The weights of network are referred by theta. Theta 1 is the set of weights between input layer and hidden layer, and theta 2 are the weights between hidden layer and the output layer. Now that we have the network defined, Let's look into the neurons in more detail. Let's try and understand what gets computed in each neuron as part of the forward pass. Especially, we want to see inside the composition of each neuron. X is just an input layer, and our interest is more on hidden and the output layers. The hidden layer neuron has two components. Z superscript 2, indicating the linear combination of input times the weight, which is the theta, theta 1. This is the pre-activation value. And it is also has A superscript 2, which is the activation function applied on Z. In this case, we are using an activation function of sigmoid. And this A superscript 2 is the post-activation value. The next layer we, we are interested in is the output layer. Again, the output layer has two components, Z superscript 3, indicating the linear combination of weight times theta 2. This is the pre-activation value. And it has A superscript 3, which is the post-activation value of having applied an activation function. As you might recall, the sigmoid function is 1 by 1 plus e power minus z. Okay, So that's what we're going to be using throughout this video. Now that we understood what got computed with forward pass, we turn our attention to the goal of backpropagation, which is how should I change my weights with respect to the loss? In our case, the loss function is a mean square error. It's a squared loss, which is j of theta is equal to half of actual value minus the predicted value, the whole squared. The predicted value is the value of the output neuron, which is a superscript 3. Therefore, the weight update equations are theta 1 is equal to the last known theta 1 plus change in loss with respect to theta 1 and theta 2 is the last known theta 2 plus change in loss with respect to theta 2. As we can see we need to compute the partial derivative of a loss function with respect to theta 1 and theta 2 separately for understanding our weight updates. First let's compute weight update for theta 2. Since theta 2 is not a direct function of output, we need to compute it in four steps. First, let's focus on the output neuron as we go over the steps. Step 1, compute the derivative of the error with respect to the activation in the output layer. So I've shown that in red arrow. Step 2, for the output neuron, compute the derivative of the activation function with respect to the pre-activation value. I've shown that with the CN value. Step 3, compute the derivative of the output layer's pre-activation value with respect to theta 2. I've shown that with magenta color. Finally, use calculus chain rule 
to compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to theta 2. Then when you solve the derivative and you simplify, we get this value highlighted in red line, which is what we shall be using in our application for weight updates. Now let's apply similar methodology to compute the weight updates for theta 1. Since theta 1 is not a direct function of output, we need to compute it in six steps. Let's focus on the output neuron initially. Step 1, compute the derivative of the error with respect to the output layer activation value. Step 2, compute the derivative of the output layer activation value with respect to the output layer pre-activation value. Now these two steps are similar to what we did earlier, but step 3 onwards, it starts to differ. Step 3, let's focus on the hidden neuron, hidden layer neuron, because we are going to compute the derivative of the output pre-activation value with respect to the hidden layer post-activation value. Step 4, we compute the derivative of the hidden layer's activation value with respect to hidden layer's pre-activation value. Step 5, we compute the derivative of the hidden layer's pre-activation value with respect to theta 1. And finally, we put them all together using calculus chain rule. After simplifying, we do get this particular value highlighted in the red line, which we shall be using in our applications for weight update of theta 1. To summarize, for our simple feedforward network, our theta 1, theta 2 update equations initially were. Then we use derivatives with chain rule to represent the weight updates for theta 1 as below and theta 2 as below. It's worth noting that theta 1 is a function of error, the actual minus predicted, activations both in hidden and output layer, theta 2 and the input layer value x. However, theta 2 is only a function of error and the activation in the output layer. The key summary and takeaways are we did a simple feedforward network with only one path from output to input. The same methodology can be applied when we have more than one path between output and input. And in such a case, the final output are represented as additions of each path. The weight updates were represented as function of error and activations. The gradients and the back propagation algorithm we discussed are implemented in TensorFlow, PyTorch, and other popular frameworks. In the next video, I shall showcase a simple example using all the math we did today. I hope you enjoy learning backpropagation. Till next video, good luck.